Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all uh, to all who are mothering. Uh, <laughs> well, I got to open it up. There are a lot of people who are not moms by birth um, who are still mothering. So happy Mother's Day to all who mother. A uh, couple announcements. Uh, the flowers are placed by Suhail Alejandro Haddad in celebration of their mothers and grandmothers. A uh, couple announcements. Our studies will be going on this week as normal. So our 1215, we are finishing up Acts. Uh, I think we have one chapter left. Uh, Paul has just been shipwrecked on Malta, and then he heads to Rome. And so we will begin our study on the book of Romans after that. Um, our 6 o'clock study, we are just in chapter 2 of God's <laughs> Gospel. So it's a lot of meat, it's a lot of deep stuff. So if you're interested, uh, please come on out. That's 6 p.m. Tuesday nights, and we are continuing our study uh, through Shirley Guthrie's book, Christian Doctrine, in the pastor's class, which is at 845 on Sunday mornings. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Alan. Those of you who ordered script last Sunday, it's ready to pick up uh, today. You can get it in Fellowship Hall. And um, this is one of the last days we can sign up for to attend Robin Hood. We created this event for fellowship between older members of the church and younger members of the church. And we chose the production of Robin Hood because this uh, particular production is written especially to appeal to um, adults, teens, and children. And uh, Lou came up with the idea of we'll have a cookout next Sunday. And uh, they meet with the forest theme. So we're going to cook out in the forest, which is actually the parking lot. We have hamburgers and hot dogs and beverages, and um, we're asking members of the congregation to bring uh, uh, salads, side dishes, and desserts to sign up in the narthex. I'll be down in Fellowship Hall to uh, sign up uh, to get the theater tickets. Um, and the production's at 1 o'clock at, <clears throat> at the uh, Waldron Arts Center downtown, and uh, the tickets are heavily discounted by the participation. Well, we do have lots of deer in the parking lot, so you kind of, <laughs> if you're not thinking of Robin Hood, at least you'll think of Bambi. Uh, so, uh, any other announcements? And also, oh, yes, Mina. Yeah. Hello. Hi. 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 Um, but I just returned a couple days ago from living in India for about a year, 10 months. Um, and while I was there, I was living in the, or working in the heart of Jaipur, the pink city in India. And I don't know if you heard on the news much during the winter, um, during the winter months, but pollution is a really, really, really bad problem in India and honestly all over the world. The girls who I work with were stuck in the city center their whole lives and they probably will not be moving out anytime soon. Um, and because of that, as I was kind of contemplating with this issue, I saw an opportunity through the Presbyterian Church USA to walk, to divest, to encourage our church to divest from fossil fuels. So starting June 1st, I'll be walking from Louisville to St. Louis alongside a lot of other Presbyterians um, for two weeks in an effort to encourage the Presbyterian Church USA 
to divest from fossil fuels at our General Assembly this coming June, which my mom will be at as well. Um, so I'm just asking if you have any money to spare for sponsorship as we go, because we are trying to get the whole trip funded and supported with prayer and any type of donation that you may have. So any amount of money I would really, greatly appreciate. And actually my sister's also joining me, so this will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, please also just keep us in your prayers the first two weeks of June as we walk. We walk into St. Louis in June. Yeah, 290 miles. <laughs> well, we went to St. Louis in July. It was hot in the car with the air conditioning. We'll definitely pray. And also keep in mind that July is coming up really quick, and that's when we are going to have our second annual Movies with Purpose. And so your pastor is currently picking out some great movies for us to watch, and um, I already have two on the slate. So and it uh, it won't be that it won't begin the first week in July because Sarah and I will be in New Jersey. It will be from the second week through. So we'll have four four weeknights of movies with discussion and lots of snacks and lots of fun. So make sure you keep that in mind that uh, uh, Vacation Bible School is not just for kids; it's for adults too. <laughs> and, uh, any other announcements? Hearing none, let us worship God. Miriam, 
Uh, and also today, uh, you'll notice that I'm not in my, I'm in my civilian clothes today. And um, please welcome Alejandra and Yasmina, who will be leading worship today for us, for our special Mother's Day service. Miriam? Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Now I'm perfect. Now I'm perfect. <laughs> God, who has protected us like a father and nurtured us like a mother. I took Israel by the arm and taught them to walk. I led them with kindness and with love, not with yours. I had them close to me. I bent down to feed them. Lord, life can be overwhelming and confusing. Can there be hope? Is our comfort far removed? The Lord has promised. I will flood my children with the wealth of nations and make the city prosper. My daughter will nurse you at your breast, carry you in her arms, and hold you in her bed. I will comfort you like a mother comforting her child. When you see this happen, you will celebrate your strength and return faster than grass can sprout. O oh God, our help in ages past, our strength for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast in our eternal home. I have learned to feel safe and satisfied, just like a young child on a smother lap. Children, you must trust the Lord now and pray. Our opening hymn is Morning Has Broken, hymn number 469. Morning Has Broken, hymn number 469. Please rise.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Pache. Welcome back, Orlando. Thank you. Peace be with you. Beautiful. Thank you.
now we're going to pass out some gifts to all the ladies here today. Um, so if I could get some help up here from fellow children, that would be awesome. Yeah, come on up. Thomas, do you want to help? Thank you. <laughs> Where's Ben? Ben's on here. Garrett, would you like to Anybody who is doing mothering but isn't a lady? <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to sing the children's song, um, number seven from the songbook, Shepherd of My Soul. welcomes us with new hope and without reservation, and with a heart full of love and free of guilt. As your welcome children, turn our bonds of sin into cords of compassion, and welcome us home as your forgiven children. God loves us. 
God forgives us. God lives us to new life. Thanks be to God. Today's reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verses 1 through 17. Excuse me. 139, verses 1 through 17. In the Pew Bible, page 476, in large print, 962. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I rise and when I sit. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, ever, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before even one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God! How vast is the sum of them! The word of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day to all of us. <laughs> and have a drink of water first. Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> the usual joke. <laughs> Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, for you are a rock and our Redeemer. Amen. As always, I am honored to be here and to have the opportunity to share with you my thoughts and my reflections on the great calling of motherhood. Today, on Mother's Day, I want to honor our mothers and our grandmothers by thanking God for the great gift of having them in our lives. It has been four years since the last time I gave a Mother's Day meditation, and I have missed it. I miss doing it. But the reasons that kept me away from this pulpit were beautiful and exciting events in the lives of my children that filled me with great joy and have been the best gifts a mother can ask for. The ideas and reflections I will share with you today come from my own life and from my own experiences. But my hope is that as I communicate this message to you, I will inspire you to bring back memories of your own stories with your mothers and grandmothers and with all those women that have loved you and encourage you to be who you are today. I am filled with gratitude for the very special women that God has placed in my life. My mother, my grandmothers, my aunties, my spiritual guides, my teachers and friends, 
that nurtured me and guided me from childhood to adulthood, continue to inspire me to be a better daughter, a better mother, and a better wife. These wonderful women have carried me through the difficulties and the turbulences that come with this beautiful journey of life. And I am the person I am today. I would say, for better or for worse. <laughs> because of their guidance, their patience, and their unconditional love. I feel blessed beyond measure because these courageous and intelligent women of faith have enriched my spiritual journey and have encouraged me to grow beyond what I ever thought possible. They sustained me with their love, and they taught me to love others by loving me. Today, I want to honor two very special women. Teta Evelyn Nasser, Suhel and Fadi's grandmother, <coughs> and Sarah Cochran. These two wonderful women of God witnessed their faith with their lives more than with their words. They knew God's love with a certainty that made their faith exciting and inviting to others. They both lived abundantly, and they both went peacefully to meet their Creator because they were confident in His love. Teta Evelyn and Sarah accompany me as I continue to live my life in ways that honor them and with eternal gratitude for their presence in my life. I believe with all my heart that my relationship with all these women has enriched my relationship with God. And it is because of them that I have been able to embrace God's love as naturally as I was able to accept their love for me. I also believe that the reason these relationships are so meaningful is because they model for us the love that God has for his creatures. The relationships that I have with these wonderful women that God placed in my life have been nurturing to me not because they were or are perfect, but because these awesome women, each one of them individually and all of them together as one, have embodied the love that God has for me. When we are loved unconditionally, God's love becomes more real, more comfortable, and more organic. It becomes easier to accept that God believes that we deserve to be loved. We become more comfortable with the reality that the creator and sustainer of this amazing universe loves us more than we can ever imagine. And we embrace the truth that is declared through all the scriptures the truth that tells us that God's divine love has been waiting to love us since the beginning of time. Because we have been loved even before we were formed. I believe this profound kind of love is mirrored in the way a pregnant mother is able to love her unborn child even before it has any human form. The psalmist says it beautifully. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book 
before one of them came to be. I am convinced that God's love for us is best modeled by a mother's love because motherhood has much to tell us about God's heart. Even in the longings of a woman who longs for a child, either because of infertility or for any other circumstances, we can see the reflections of God's tender heart longing for us to love him back. God loves us in a way that it not, is not just nurturing, but it's also profoundly visceral. And that is why he created us in his image. God has with us the same inseparable bond that exists between a mother and her child. Because God loves us in a very maternal way. And God wants us to know that. Listen again to the words of our call to worship. In Isaiah 66, we hear God speaks as a loving mother. I will comfort you like a mother comforts her child. In Hosea, we hear God speaking as a nurturing mother. I taught them to walk. I led them with kindness and with love. And I held them close to me and bent down to feed them. And my favorite one, Isaiah 49, verses 15 and 16, where God gives us a promise of eternal love. Can a mother forget her baby at her breast? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Because you see, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. This imagery of God as a mother is not a modern feminist idea. It is, as you can see through the scriptures of today, an idea that is older than Christianity and that came to us during the Middle Ages through the practices and the writings of mystic Judaism. I have been interested in this subject for some time and I have explored it through my studies at St. Minor. I have found an incredible source of inspiration in the writings of a medieval mystic named Julian of Norwich. And I would like to share with you a little bit of what I have learned from this awesome woman who lived more than 600 years ago. We know very little of her personal life, except what she tells us through her writings, which isn't much. Julian was a lay woman that lived in the, 14th, in the 14th century in England and became very ill when she was 30. During her illness, she had several near-death experiences, and with them, she had a series of visions. She recorded her visions and her reflections in her only known publication, a book that she called Revelations of Divine Love. And through, his, through this single publication, Julian became one of the most important theologians of her time. And her book, The Revelations of Divine Love, is considered today one of the most remarkable achievements of the English Middle Ages. Although she knew that she was considered one of the greatest theologians of her time, Julian tells us throughout her writings that she wrote her book only to communicate a simple message of love from God to us. Unfortunately, Julian's liberating message of unconditional love had nothing to do with the medieval church's message of oppression 
and fear. <coughs> so Julia's writings put her at great risk of being burned at the stake, like many others were at the time. But Julian was so passionate about her message that although she knew that she could die, she continued to write. And I am very glad she did, because her powerful and revolutionary mes uh, message and writings are still transforming lives more than 600 years later. I fell in love with Julian's writings because her simple message of acceptance and unconditional love resonated with the inclusive, loving God that I have gotten to know through my faith journey. I also find Julian's message of freedom in God's love as powerful and as, and as relevant today as it was in her times. Through Julian's writings, I was able to confirm what I already knew deep within my heart. That as truly as God is our Father, so truly God is our Mother. The God of Julian's visions is a loving and forgiving God. And Julian's beautiful descriptions of God's feminine nurturing, nurturing qualities have come to me as a gift from this amazing woman from the Middle Ages. And it is through her writings that I find the motivation to continue using my voice to speak of a God that loves us just as we are. Julian is unapologetic when she speaks of God's inclusiveness. And she reminds us that it is, not, it is not in God's character to hate what he has made. That God loved us before he made us. And that his love for us has never diminished and never will. In one of her 17 visions, Julian describes how she specifically ask God for a clear revelation of hell. And the only answer she received was that the God of her visions had no interest in speaking of evil, but instead spoke only of love. The God of Julian's revelations has no anger for the sin or for the sinners. And when Julian asked God about the sins of humanity and about the day of judgment, all she heard was God's assurance that all shall be well, and all shall be well, and in all manner of things shall be exceedingly well. Julian interpreted this response as God's promise that the whole world will be redeemed because on the day of judgment, God will manifest his motherly love and will perform a great deed to make all things well. Although she lived more than 600 years ago, Julian of Norwich, is one of my spiritual mentors. I hope that you were able to hear her liberating message of God's unconditional love through my meditation today, because she was my inspiration. I leave you with one of my favorite prayers from her. Mother in God, you gave me birth in the bright morning of this world. Creator, source of every breath, you are my rain, my wind, my sun. 
Mother in Christ, you took my form, offering me your food of light, grain of life, and grape of love, your very body for my peace. Mother in spirit, nurturing one, in arms of patience, hold me close, so that in faith I root and grow until I flower, until I know. Amen. <laughs> we continue now with the concerns of the Church Universal. And I'm going to do it a little bit differently than John. Because I'm not as good as him. <laughs> so I need to organize my brain here. Are there any prayer concerns? And I would like, I'm going to ask you. Um, I will pray for everyone that is on our bulletin. Is there anything else, any special concerns that you want to? Uh, Patty Lucas called me uh, last night and she has pneumonia. Okay. And she would like us to pray for her. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I have a friend who is on a company. <coughs> Allergy medicine, uh, blood pressure medicine, what has been working, um, they think they need to take them off of, and they haven't found a good replacement. Um, and so he's been really out of sorts, and um, so hopefully they can find the right prescription for his issue. Screen. Little Evelyn Rose is up to 11 pounds. Wow. She's going in for major <coughs> surgery on both of her hips. And she will be in a body cast for three to six months. Oh. This is very serious, so we mm -hmm. like to keep her in the prayers. It's Evelyn Rose. Evelyn Rose. I want to pray for Miriam and for Miriam's mom up in heaven, and also tomorrow is Fuad's birthday, and Miriam's birthday is coming up as well. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Okay. 
Miss Virginia. Mercies for granddaughter Claire, who is in Greece. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, creator of the universe, gentle healer, lover of our souls, we come to you this beautiful Sunday morning, grateful for the opportunity of living another day, surrounded by the beauty of your creation. We also come to you to worship as a community and as a family, knowing that our beloved small church on second and east side is a gift from you. We know that we are here because you called each one of us by name and you gathered us to become a family and to love each other in your precious name. We pray that the love you planted within us overflows out of our grateful hearts and change the world, one act of kindness at a time. We are especially grateful for the gift of motherhood, so well modeled by you. And we thank you today for the blessing of our mothers, our grandmothers, and for all the women that you have placed in our lives to model your love for us. We thank you especially for Miriam's mother, who is in heaven today, and I'm sure she's here with us today. Lord, we are, you are our loving shepherd. We are aware that there are members of our church family that couldn't be here today. We ask you to give each of them a special blessing and a special awareness of your presence and your love so they know that in this very moment they are being mentioned, they are remembered, and they are lifted up in prayers. Lord, you are our great physician. We pray that you place your loving healing hands on the bodies and the minds of those family members and friends that we mentioned here today. We pray for Patty Lucas. We pray for Andy's friend. We pray for Auntie May Hamati, for, ba for baby Evelyn Rose, for Bob Craig, for Anne Roddick, for Bill Schofield, for Micheline Finley, Stephanie Gontieri, Shia Henry, Beverly Hughes, Joy Jackson, John Prince, Millie Runner, and Gary Richardson and his wife. We pray that they know, without a shadow of a doubt, that you are with them, caring for them through their caregivers, through their nurses, and through their physicians, and that there is no reason to fear, because you are with them, loving them and guiding them as you walk with them towards their healing and their strength. Lord, you are our refuge and our guide. We pray for travel mercies. We pray for our family members and our friends that are traveling today or in the near future. We pray that their trips will be enjoyable and that you accompany them back 
to the safety of their homes. We pray for the wardens as they travel to and back from Ohio, and for Virginia's granddaughter, Claire, as she travels to Greece. <coughs> Loving parent, you know us better than we know ourselves. You know our deepest joys and our deepest pains. You know well that there were prayers that were left unsaid today. <coughs> Maybe because they were so painful or so intimate that they were left for your loving eyes only. We lift those prayers right now and we place them in your loving hands. Knowing that you will handle them with care because they are as precious to you as they are for us. And last but not least, we share with you our joys and our celebrations as we know that you also rejoice with us. And as you heard Sarah say, we thank you for her mother and for her grandmother. What a wonderful gift to celebrate this special day, this Mother's Day. And Lord, I thank you for the privilege and the honor to be here with my church family. I'm grateful that I get to share a little part of me with them today. Knowing that you have heard us, we are in peace now as we pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus our Lord and with the words that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue now with the sharing of our tithes and our offerings.
ask that you bless these acts of generosity, generosity that we learn to practice from our God, the Mother. We ask that they contribute to the greater work in the world, pushing us all towards unabounding love, justice, and the inclusion for all. Amen. Please stand and join us in the closing hymn, Praise My Soul, the Kingdom of Heaven, hymn number 478.